Susie. Hi, Rui. Dance and put it in. No. Hello. Hey, Russ. Good to see you, dude. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Working from home, like everyone else, just getting bored out of my mind. How are you? A bit bored. But holding up all right. Coming to help. Hey, I was at a sing along. Hey, Susie. <laughs> there's, um, yeah, there's, uh, we live in like an estate and they're doing a sing along in the middle of the courtyard. So Susie was just involved in that. You should uh, ask to sing a song. I'm teaching tits. That's a lie. I'm laying on the ground getting beat up while you teach tits. <laughs> Let's see. Am I the only one? I don't know. Yeah. Normally you get about 10 people. I think most people want to and do it during the day, but um, the, like this is the this is the office for the other people that live here. They're all working from home. I see. All I can do is uh, eight on weekdays. But still, some people join in. That's cool. This is actually the first time I see or oh, one of the online classes. Oh, it looks like we have more company. Who's coming in? Hola. Hello, Megan. Hi. Hello. I'm, just I'm quickly doing weights in my backyard, so I'm just going to turn off my video and my sound, and I will. Are you to see the biscuits? Or You're a what are the biscuits? I just heard about biscuits. I'm going to go out and get some biscuits after Yeah. I've eaten all the baked goods in my house. So I'm gonna have to go get some biscuits, or I'm gonna have to make some biscuits. Do setting up another camera on her laptop, so you'll have the two views. Hello. Whoops. Oh, scary. The sound, not your face. Right. One on this one. Can you hear us? Yeah. Bye. Right. Sweet. Yes. Good. <laughs> Wait, I'm 
Oh. All right, everyone. continue with that and I'll just go down a couple of different tangents. Um, one very common problem in passing half guard is um, dealing with lockdowns, right? So one of the most common questions get asked. Um, a lot of people play this guard and it's very difficult to deal with initially. So I'll we'll cover it. So we flattened our opponent. Some people will allow themselves to be flattened. I'm going to turn this down a bit. So you've got two camera options, guys. You've got the Grand Union and uh, another one that's Ross. So I'm going to be looking to try and get the angle right in the Grand Union. So we flattened our opponent out, and they put a lockdown on. So this is the lockdown. The outside leg goes over here. This one comes off. And she locks a triangle with the inside under that. Now she hooks under my foot. Shuffle forward. There. And now she's going to cut straight. Do it slowly. Straightening her legs. There. Now it's very difficult to pass. The major threat we have here, so if we get caught in a lockdown, is this arm coming underneath my leg. So if she gets under there and shovels this leg up, Onto my shoulder, stay. We are now in electric chairs, which is a groin stretch. If you can do the splits, you don't have to worry about this, but she will sweep. So, whenever you get put in a lockdown in half guard, the first thing you do, we do not want cross face pressure anymore. We want double unders. So, this hand comes under, and we want both arms under her armpits. This makes it impossible for her to get this leg up onto her shoulder. Okay, so straight up, that's the answer. She wants this arm under my left. She can do this if I have a cross face over her shoulder. She can't do it if I have an underhook on the near side. No way for her to come up. So, now our leg is still stuck in here. People will be kicking rather hard and it will be hurting a little bit. So here's the trick. Probably best to switch to uh, the Ross angle on this. It's quite close up work. So I move my hips across, and this leg will come under and hook underneath this heel. That's the off button for the lockdown. If I don't move my hips and move across the other side, that heel will be on the floor. Therefore, I, can't, I won't be able to get anything underneath it. So you want to bring this foot under, and now lever it up. From here, you should be able to circle your leg out really quite easily. The base place to have your foot is up under your own butt. Now she won't be able to hit the lockdown again. The reason why you got caught in the lockdown is because your back leg would have been trailing. That is not where we want the leg when we're passing half guard. We want it, release it. Heel up under our butt with the knee on the outside of our opponent's hip. Okay? So she won't be able to lock us down. There. Anyway, she puts the lock down in. 
outside leg under, triangles and extends. Hard to apply pressure here. First thing you do if you're cross face is getting rid of this cross face. Double unders. Move your hips to this side. Elevate in the heel. Find that heel with your spare leg. Here, lift the heel up. Circle your leg out. And to half drive. From here, I, I quite like passing off of double unders. I'd immediately start tripoding, looking to free, up, free my knee, start passing. So we'll cover that briefly as well. If I move this camera. So we have our cross face flattened out in half guard, but she puts her lockdown in. This hand. One over on the face, comes under for double unders. We move this way to elevate the heel. We find that heel and we lift it up. We circle our leg out to the safe position, which is shin running parallel with her hips, the other knee connected to a rib cage, and this knee past the hip here. From here to pass, we'd look to tripod to free our knee line. So my head will hit the floor and I'll raise my butt up in the air. From here, once my knee slips out, I've got options in which way to pass. I could use my shin staple. So the shin staple being the spare leg, hooking inside the thigh. This is massive if you want to get a clean extraction of that leg. It's a really good thing to do once you push flatten your opponent out. So once we've undone the lockdown, and we're pressurizing, shin staple. The reaction, foot inside, and take a butterfly hook on the inside of the thigh on top. From here, raise your butt. She will not be able to stop that knee from coming out. So sometimes if we're lucky, we'll be able to pop through to a full mount where we'll cross our feet under our opponent's thighs and drop our hips heavy. You see my knees are up off the ground? Important detail on applying pressure in mount. You don't want to have weight going through your own knees. You want your legs crossed under them with your hips driving through them. So as soon as she tries to bridge, that's the best bridge she has, okay? As soon as she tries to catch me out in every session, I think. So please stop me if you have any questions. Any details you'd like to me to go over? I'd imagine most of us have been caught in lockdowns before and struggle getting out. So we flatten, cross face. Lockdown comes in, outside leg, triangle, and she extends hard. Good. From here, hips move to the side, exposing that heel. Find it, lift it up, undo it. Knees are in the correct position. Oh my bad, I didn't have my underhook. That's really important. <laughs> underhook on the other side. Elbows clamped onto a rib cage. Now, shin staple comes in and we're gonna tripod to mouth. Head comes in, up, full mount, cross your feet under your opponent's thighs and drop your hips down. Raise your head, it will make your hips heavier. If you wanna apply weight through your hips, general rule, Head high, it means your hips will drive down through your opponent. So, and the opposite is also true. If you want to apply pressure through your chest and through your shoulders, you raise your butt high up above the line of your shoulders. So, yeah, any questions with that one? Any, um, anything anyone wants to jump in on? Guys, it. Uh, Susie's dad has just joined. The, uh, the group. I'd put money on it being my mom, actually. Is it your mom? Hi, Susie's parents. <laughs> You're dark now. Now I'm, now I'm really nervous. So, <laughs> we often get flattened out when we're in half guard. So we'll look at both um, the top and the bottom here. We covered it at the end of last week, but I want to recover it as well. We should all be um, comfortable to get flat down. You see, Susie's building her frame. Her knee is high above her shoulder. And this is framing across 
my other shoulder. She's got very, she's got soft arms, soft legs. It doesn't matter if I get all the way to her face, providing that this and this is still in the way, it's fine. That should be able to reset that distance. So don't straight arm and maintain a lot of distance. This is plenty. If I flatten my opponent out, yeah, no lockdown for now. I've got my feet in the right place. What Susie can look to do is pimp arm. The pimp arm, guys, in your notes, is this inside arm coming in and blocking my knee. You don't want to put your palm on the hip because if there's any heavy hip switches, you can break your forearm or your wrist. You want to be careful there, get some injuries. You want your hand past your opponent's hip with the elbow tight on the inside of the knee there. So now you see if I switch my hips, it stops me from switching and there's nothing under for me to break even if I manage to drop through. What this does is it stops me following Susie's hips. If you do not put this pimp arm in and you try to shrimp, I will follow the hips. Means she will not be able to get out. So you've got to keep my hips in position. That pimp arm comes in, she now shrimps. I'm unable to follow. You see, it's not pushing me away. Hurt is keeping me where I am. Now I can't throw my weight over onto this hip to control her. Susie can then reset her frame by bringing the knee back up. And now I'm passing from distance again, which is harder. So you get flattened out in half, don't panic. Pimp arm. No, that's an underhook. Elbow comes in. Now I can't follow my opponent when she shrimps. So when she shrimps, knee comes in, and there's us reset in half. So, looking at another option. Any questions, want to shout out? I'm going to show you some very common passes that I, yep. So, sometimes your opponent will grab your head and switch their hips. So they'll drop this hip onto the floor. Now, the pimp arm isn't going to work. I can't fix her hip in position because her hip's on the ground. So what, what I like to do here, this top leg will always have plenty of room. You release, and now we look to find her knee with our foot here. She will not extract her leg. This lower leg is plenty enough control to stop her from extracting. So we unlock, forget the squeeze, foot finds the inside of that knee. Now she's really off balance in a lot of trouble. Here, we'll gently extend. The lower hand will cup the shoulder, stopping from her, her basing out on this arm. If I don't grab this, she'll base out and square her hips up. So we're gonna do a modified Superman sweep. Shoulder, this hand punches up like Superman past her as this gently extends. Yeah, and now there's my reversal, there's my switch. Get flattened out in half, she hip switches. Yeah, now pimp arm isn't working anymore. But there will be plenty of room to get this outside butterfly hook in. Trust this lower hook. Okay, it can't be lazy, otherwise she'll just step her leg out. So. You want this leg bent fully, wrapping around this leg. This outside leg comes in, finds a hook on the knee. Cup the shoulder, Superman punch past your opponent's head and kick you. Make sure that this knee stays ahead of this hip. So don't over kick. If she pushes this knee in between her legs, she, it can actually expose my back. So make sure this knee doesn't, this leg doesn't overextend. Extend a little bit. Now come up and into a mat. So she cross faces here. 
She could try to the free her knee or she could switch her hips. I want to keep her hips low. The higher she brings her hips up, the harder it is for me to do this. So Susie will want to get her hips up in line with my chin and in line with my shoulder like this. Now I'm really struggling. You see how little leg I have? This hand still has a big job. If she switches her hips, job is to keep the hip low by pinching the elbow tight, glued to her hip here. I like taking a C grip in the armpit, but that's locked in there. So now she tries running her hips up, it's stuck. So elbow tight, we can't leave the hip come up level to, with our head. We'll lose the knee line and we'll, look, and we'll get past. So whenever we're controlling her, keep your hips low and make sure you keep your legs controlling above her knee line. Don't let it slip down. This gives her a lot more mobility and a lot more passing options. Keep it above the line of the knee. This outside leg comes in, hooks the knee. This hand switches to a cup so she can't base up and stop the sweep. Pull the elbow and shoulder down to your ribs. Superman punch, kick. Now we can come up on top, making sure this top knee stays ahead of the hip. Any questions, guys? Could you do that one more time, please? Of course. So we get flattened out, they hip switch. Life is rubbish. What we don't want, hips to come up high so this elbow clamps heavy on the hip to stop to keep them low so we can control that knee line. From here, this lower leg keeps control of her leg as we pummel this outside butterfly hook in. Superman punch past the head, cup in the shoulder so she can't base out. Sorry, head. Superman punch, extend the leg, not too far. What I see loads is this leg getting kicked super hard, locking out entirely. Susie's good. She'll eat the leg and start turning back into me and taking my back. So it's not an explosive kick, guys. Just enough to off balance. Superman punch. Up into the top. So yeah, I wanted to do this class on um, one of the most common questions is what happens if we get flattened out in, uh, in half guard. So it's kind of a broad question. You get flattened out with their hips square or they can be switched. So we're going to continue down this vein. Any questions? Uh, Ross, uh, from this hip switch, uh, and I don't know if Orlando's on the call, <laughs> but what he I does. I know what you're going to ask. Um, so instead of controlling the head, he sort of. Uh, Shoots his arm across your midriff. I'll do uh, that one now. He will just yeah. switch over to the other side and attack a Kimura on the far forearm. Yeah. So, I know exactly what you're talking about. We're going to do that counter. <laughs> Right, so, Orlando doesn't take the head. So I'm not gonna say Orlando. Some people don't take the head. They shoot this arm across your body and they switch their hips. Like that. Rules are the same. Want to keep their hips low. The higher they come up here, the harder it is for me to hit my counters. So, elbow tight. I'm creating a bit of a roadblock on this hip. This is huge. Elbow connected to your ribs, here, keeping her low. Now, Orlando does sometimes attack this Camille, which I will cover a counter for. If he's just looking for the pass, he'll shoot across your body here like this. This is called a twister half guard. The twister position is anything where you're underneath your opponent's arms like this. So a twister side control would be no leg. She switches her hips. That's twister side control. So you see the, how twister's added to these positions. What we're looking to do here is to threaten the back. We can sweep. So we could come up onto our elbow and try hip bumping our opponent off of us. So elbow, and then we try throwing our hips through. Yeah, we can come up on top and sweep. Very easy to counter. Well, 
Susie, to stop this from happening, will lift her hips up off the ground. Now, everyone see that space underneath her hip. This will allow me to extract my lower leg up to here. Now I have her back. So in stopping me from sweeping, I can now take the back. From here, I turn my hips around underneath the space that she has given me. I'm onto the back. So up again. So Orlando switches his hips through into a twister uh, half gun. So we have to threaten the sweep. One way of doing that, butterfly hook as well. So outside leg comes in, hooks exactly the same as before. We start threat and see what she wants to do. She wants to raise this hip to stop from getting swept. So this allows me to extract my lower leg and bring it up to my, my chest. Turn out and onto the back. This move is called, um, it's called octopus guard. Okay, so it's a counter for twister positions. You're looking to get an elevation and commitment of weight onto you. So the weight coming onto you elevates the hips, allows you to extract your leg. So hip switches, big thing, right? So for Susie to actually win this position, um, she wants to have her hands on my hips. So um, top hand on the lower hip and the other hand here. And she's going to be pushing off of them to bring her hips and ribs as high up on me as possible. Now I'm in a bit of trouble. So if you're using this pass, think of it the opposite way, right? So hips high, I'm going to be struggling. Elbows tight, keeping your opponent low. If you're not comfortable in unlocking your guard or put your butterfly hook in to threaten that sweep, keep it tight, come up onto an elbow and try throwing your hips through like a hip bump. So through like this. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you'll end up in the top position. Susie, to stop this, will lift her hip up. I will extract my lower leg. I turn my hips in and take my points back. So that's move one from that position. How are we feeling? Yeah, makes sense. Thank you. So there's a lot of instruction. Eduardo Tellez is the guy who um, really pioneered the octopus guard. So if you want to see somebody doing it really well, he's great at it. Um, so you know, actually something I do have to say: if somebody switches their hips through here, Susie can reverse this. Um, so. If I threaten and Susie allows me to sweep her, all she needs to do to counter this is to push this knee down. So now, if she does that as I'm coming up on top, she is now in the mirror position and will take my back. And Orlando likes that one as well. So if the sweep feels a little bit too easy with Lando, he's letting you sweep him to take your back. And I've seen him do this against black belts. He's very good at it. So with that one, your opponent hip switches through. Keep them low. See if she's going to hit the counter. So she's going to be suspiciously easy to get up and start sweeping. She understands that if she pushes this knee down, she will, as I come up, She'll take my back and turn into me. I'll be playing a game, right? So the hip switch comes through. I try going for my octopus. She pushes through. No, 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 no. Just let me come up. Keep your arms in the same place. Yeah. And now she collects my lower leg. Take my back. Yep. So just be wary of that. Know that if it's too easy, they're looking for that. Now you mentioned um, the threat of submissions. Sometimes they'll switch their hips and attack the mirrors on the far side here. So she has my arm connect. What I want to do here is take a grip on the inside of my thigh. So go for it. Yeah. Now, 
So he usually wants to stay on top. So as she looks to attack the Kimura, I'm going to lie on my back and it's going to raise this hip again. So she's chasing this. I'm not focusing on getting her to let go of my arm. I want this hip up off the ground. That's the trick. Knee comes out. And now I turn towards my arm. Once my nose is facing this way, it's going to be very hard for her to finish. So circle out of this Kimura control, I point my thumb away from her. Like this. The Kimura will come off and you'll start attacking the back. So super common. See somebody looking to grab the wrist here and switch in their hip to the other side. If you notice that, this hand can frame, the forearm frames on the hip, providing that you keep my hip up off the ground, you'll take the back. So you see they're fishing for it, shoot the arm around, not, not, never your palm, right? Big, big error there by Susie. You put your palm underneath your opponent's hip as it's dropping, that straight forearm is going to get injured. So your hands should always be passed. We never place our hands on our opponent's body. Wrist locks and uh, other, other injuries. So just a gentle forearm here. This stops my hip from going to the floor. Forearm. So Susie will be able to extract her lower leg up to her chest. And then once that's through, she will turn towards her arm. So she'll turn to her left. And the back gets taken. The battery is running low. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's going to get a charger for the computer. Is that all making sense? Is there any questions? Yeah, makes sense. Thanks. Orlando will be mortified if you see this. And also, look, feel free to ask any other questions, any burning issues. How uh, how to beat Basil isn't isn't allowed. Have you ever beaten Basil? Have I ever beaten Basil? Ask yeah. him. Right. Um, Ross, I got a quick question. Yeah. Um, my name's not Tammy Jean Tripley. That's my fiance's name. Sorry for logging in onto the wrong the wrong pseudonym. I was wondering who it was. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, back to Orlando. Um. Not, not that he's like the biggest chip on my shoulder in the world. In the world. Uh, when you're when he sits back with his hands on my hips. He's really good at keeping his weight low enough that I can't really get my when my el elbows on the floor by his hip. I can't quite get my knee out, but he's really good at collapsing my arm back on itself, so that he ends up right. then like riding up, like getting my arm back up my body. And I never know where, like yeah. you just said, so don't put your hand on there. I shouldn't like put my hand out. I should just maintain the elbow and just fight for that for that position, right? Well, if he already gets his hip to the ground, it's all right there to take like a trouser grip if you're in a gi or a flat okay. palm. What I don't want is palms underneath my opponent as his hip yeah. is dropping. Got you. Okay. Okay. So don't 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 trust that there. Um, but if the hip's already on the floor and you need a little bit more. Oops, your hips, please. Yeah. It's okay to get a flat palm here and start pushing this down. Okay, so if you fine. need a little bit more punch, a little bit more distance, yeah. you take that there. Because not, she's not going to be able to drop it anymore. If she does drop it, she, her back's almost on the ground and you're sweeping. Okay, got you. Thanks. So back to the Kimura attack. I just want to cover that one again. So my arm is, she's latched onto my arm. 
if she leans back too far, I'll come up on top. Now, very much like, so she leans back too far, I can come up in the top position. Now this leads into Kimura defense, which is actually really easy when you know how to do it. Um, you pull it out as hard and as fast as you can. No, that's not the right answer. Um, you lean shoulder pressure into that armpit. Okay. So somebody's locked up this Kimura on you. We base up on our back leg. So now, see this is basing. This allows me to drive weight into this shoulder. Now Susie tries to apply the Kimura. Doesn't go anywhere. So job, meat of your shoulder into the armpit, leaning in. This hand, key. To save this, she could potentially invert the position. I'm not going to ask her to do it, but this leg would get thrown over my head and I try and isolate this arm, this arm entirely. So this arm is to, is to stop that. You frame on the hip and push away. We will then look to free our knee line. So you push on the hip, knee comes out. So Kamira comes on. Push on the hip, weight going through the shoulder. Once the knee's out, this knee will travel around to the back and we'll take the back again. So we'll drop the knee down and we point our thumb up to the ceiling and take the back off of our opponent attacking Kimura's on it. So. Susie's got me in half guard. Sees my hands on the floor. She shoots up for the Kimura. So here. We want something in this armpit. In order to apply the Kimura, she needs to get her back down to the ground. So she lies onto her back, and then, so she goes to the Kimura again. I'm gonna use this hand. So if you're quick about it, and you just straight arm with your opposite, lock up the Kimura, and you straight arm into the armpit, try getting your back to the floor. There's no way we'll she'll be able to apply this Kimura if I'm applying pressure through the other armpit. This can be done with my spare arm or the shoulder of the arm that she is attacking, depending on how far through the Kimura she is. So if she's already starting to go onto her back, this arm can't be used anymore. So I've seen it a bit late. You push off of the floor with this hand, use that to get your weight up off of this foot. So you base on the floor, driving your shoulder into the armpit. My hand is being punched through my legs and I'm straightening my arm the whole time. My head turns around the shoulder. I free my knee by pushing on the hip and my knee pops over to the other side. I turn my thumb up to the ceiling. No commuter anymore. I can sit up in the seat belts and start threatening the back. So, like Kimura defense, like a lot of these other, a lot of submissions is actually going into them. Our natural reaction is to pull away. Like with arm bars, with guillotines as well, pulling your head up quite often isn't the best thing. Same with Kimura, it's pulling the arm up. You can get it early, but if your opponent's got it locked up, we drive our weight into them through that shoulder. Any thoughts on that, guys? And go, Meg. My parents left. Yeah. Your dad must have got bored. <laughs> I have no thoughts. Um, so from yeah, a, that came off of, oh, carry on. I was just gonna say, from a when when you're on bottom trying to put do the Kimura, you obviously want to try and get their shoulder down as much as possible to get that pressure for the Kimura. Yeah. As a defend as a defender, they're obviously pushing your shoulder down, but you kind of want your shoulder down a little bit to get into their armpit. Like, do you allow a little bit of that pressure to happen or do you try and brace as much as possible? No, it's different. So you don't want anything up in the shoulder here. If this elbow's high up above your yeah. head, you're, finishing, you're trying to finish the camera like this, it's no good. Your job is to get this elbow through their shoulder and to get it down to the ground. Yeah, I meant like the defense side of it. 
So as you're defending it, obviously they're trying to cross your shoulder down, like you just said. Are you trying to brace your, your shoulders square or are you allowing a little bit of that because you're trying to go under their armpit? No, I'm not allowing any weight to go through my shoulder at all. I'm okay. totally exaggerating this to get this yeah. elbow up high. Um, okay. uh, that's particularly important. Yes, big people, very strong people. Yeah. You've got a tripod and get as much weight through that shoulder as possible. Okay. A steep angle. So the body shape we take, guys, to get that, is the base on this back leg, hand shooting between our legs, straight arm, and we're really leaning into the shoulder to open their arm up as high as possible. Cool. Cool. Right, so that's what happens. So if Susie switches their hips, so we're going really deep for uh, Ennis's question. Our opponent is in a twister half guard and is looking for a Kimura on my far arm. Kimura far arm, please. Good. So, if she falls back and we come up on top, we immediately come in to a tripod and drive our shoulder into this armpit. If she sees that and raises her hip and keeps her weight on top of me, we extract the lower knee and turn into our opponent, rotating our forearm as we do. So it releases the pressure on the camera and we come to take the back. So those are your options. Try keeping your arms straight, driving between your legs. It makes it a lot harder. She needs to put a bend on the arm to finish the Kimura. There are ways of finishing straight arm locks, but it can be difficult. So keep your arms straight, cupping the inside of your thigh. You don't want to have a bent arm just with the cup. Lock that arm straight. Those are your two options there. Where to go from here then? We can use um, this octopus guard as a potential side control escape as well. So it's a really, it's a, a really similar move, it's exactly the same. Susie has me in side control. And she has switched her hips to a twister side control. And there's ways of forcing this setup, we're forcing her to take this twist aside control. What we do here is let her take mount. So I turn in and look, the hip rises. So come back again. So she steps on. So as she steps over, I'm not interested in that collecting that leg. What I'm interested in doing upon that step to bring this knee up, and now I can take the back off the leg. So if you've got like anyone in the house, you can probably get them to hit switch and step over and drill this. Knee comes high under that space. Now from here, my feet are on the floor and I turn my hips in, taking my opponent's back off of this. There's a number of, uh, of escapes actually like this. So again, Susie does, wants to be a lot higher here. So if Susie manages to get up here and now she steps over, there's no way I'll be able to bring my knee up to my eye line in order to take the back. And now Susie's dishing out a bit of pressure on me. So again, somebody takes this twist to side control, we keep them low, elbows tight. If, you're, if you need a bit more um, space, you can straight arm here. In a gi, straight arming on the trousers is great. Elbows tight, knees collapse, she steps over to the other side. This knee, this hip will rise. Knee comes out, back exposure, and we're on. So yeah, this is one of my favorite side control skips. So kind of segue in into that similar movement utilized a lot in twister half guard positions. We can use it as a side control escape as well. Anyone super excited about trying that? Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Gets me out of so much trouble. I'm actually going to show you next one side control escape that works on 
the people who love Americanas from side. You know, the big, strong guys, right? Who always get those, those submissions all the time. Uh, Basil. I'm right. hanging out for this. Right. So you'll be like, let's, let's say brave, but Susie takes side control. Yeah. And Susie weighs. I don't know. It's in this scenario, 120 kilograms. Okay, she doesn't, but imagine she's ginormous. There is no way the standard bridge and shrimp is going to work against somebody at that size, right? If you watch me fighting somebody that size and I'm inside control, I ain't moving. It's too much effort. Like it's, I'm not going to get out there. So they're fishing for this arm. Whenever anyone fishes for this Americana, so she comes over the head, grabs my wrist, and hit. She is controlling me by keeping weight now on my hips. If I straighten my arm up past my it like this, this takes all of the weight up off of my hips. So magically, elbow is bent. I can't shrimp away because the weight's on my hips. If somebody's attacking an Americana on this arm, be early, let them get it, and straighten your arm up next to your ear. Pointing your thumb down to the ground. From your feet are planted, next job is to lift your hips up. This opens that door even more. I turn onto my front. So knee and knee. You see how my back leg, shin comes over the calf. I extract and come out the back over here. On, onto the turtle control. So, got Susie's got me in side control. She pins this wrist down to the ground. Good. Straight, if, if you get it, if it's too bent, like she's gonna, she's gonna get it. So, release. She starts fishing for it, you let it happen, but you straighten your arm early. If she holds on to this, point your thumb to the ground, so keep the Americana, thumb to the ground. So this will negate the straight arm bar as well. If she points my thumb up to the ceiling, she can now get straight arm bars. So you punch your arm up to your head and point the thumb to the floor. Plant your feet on the floor, do a bridge. Turn onto your knees, and it's important to get this back leg coming up over the back of this calf here. You get added control. Now we're up in turtle, and we're out of that horrible position. We've used a, a far side attack on our arm, an Americana, as bait to escape it. So against those big people, if they get that Americana, straighten it up, point the thumb to the floor, and bridge through the space that it gives you. We're now attacking the back, knee comes in, and whenever you're attacking the back and trying to uh, get somebody off turtle, the more weight you can put through their arms, the better. So you link up, and I drop my shoulder in, forcing weight through those arms exposing the back. It's the same on a standing opponent. So if we look at Grand Union Jiu-Jitsu now. Way of getting them down from this position into to attack the back. You want to put all of their weight through their arms. If you've got double unders, you put your head on their back and you start pushing your head down, forcing their hands to pop out. The more weight you're able to get through their arms in this turtle position, the easier it will be to take the back. So it's just a little principle just to think about when you're attacking the back there. Get your weight up and over your opponent's shoulders. Right. I'm waffling a lot. Talk to me. If there's nothing as cool, we can move on. So as soon as we're doing like side control escapes now, we've branched out of getting flattened out in half guard. Um, a lot of the movements are the same. There's one nice one. 
if my opponent switches her hips here, other way, we all know if she steps over with my legs up, I will be able to collect that leg and recover my guard. So, come back. What Susie will do is grab my far knee with the spare hand and pull my knees down to the ground, facing her. So now there's no way I'm going to be able to collect that top leg. But as she steps over, my, bot, my top leg will collect her back leg, the one she's leaving behind. We bring this foot inside between our legs as she comes up into a mat and collect the knee and we're in a half guard. So we're gonna we can't take the back in this cross face position if she had a twister position instead we'd be able to take the back with a very similar movement but because of this cross face we allow her to pull our knees down and we step over that trailing leg we suck that foot in and we're left with the knee outside. So here, to take weight up off of the knee and make it easy to get it back inside my guard, I drag this leg backwards. It picks her knee up, gives me space to bring my knee up to my chest and turn back into half guards. I've got my underhook, so I should be able to move straight for systems that we talked about over the previous classes on this underhook here. Remember, cup the hip, shoulder shrugs to keep her weight traveling forward. If I don't do that, I'll get my arm wrapped and I'll start having my neck attacked with darses that we looked at last week. Here. So make sure that you keep your shoulder driving forward. Best way to do that is keep this hand pointing down and try getting this elbow pointing at the back of your opponent's head. Now dars me, Sus. No luck. And Susie is, I promise you, way stronger than me, right? So palm here, elbow elevated. This hand isn't getting anywhere near my neck. So elbow high. Then we look to extract, straighten the leg, bounce up to our knees, start the sweep. So she comes back to side control. She cross faces, switches her hips, puts a massive amount of shoulder pressure through me, pulls my legs down. As she steps, the legs on the top, pulls my, her leg back inside, and I collect that knee. Normally, I'll just be able to collect the foot. To now collect the knee in this position, this leg has to get dragged back. My lower leg is straight. So if we shouldn't grab. You see here, lower leg, entirely straight. Top leg, drags back. This lifts that knee up off the ground. So, common thing people do get wrong here and find it very difficult to get this knee inside. So they pinch the knees really, really tight together and they're trying to like push this leg in. You might be able to do it, but what makes it way easier, you make this knee light first. So keep the knees pinched, facing the same way and drag this knee down. It will hook the heel and it will start elevating this knee. This will now be really easy to push inside and bring your knee up to your chest. Don't fall off. So once we're here, we want to generate that angle. We turn in, hitting our underhook. And we can now attack the back there. We can set up that same position from a mount. She comes to a mount. So if we screw up and we find ourselves in mount. Oh, ease up, Susie. If she is taking this position with her feet crossed underneath me, first thing is to undo cross. this, right? So if they're grapevining or cross. So you've got to get your feet 
back inside here. We don't want her crossing her feet underneath me. We can get to that same position by straightening one leg entirely, turning onto our side, and collecting that top foot. From here, extend the leg, raises the knee, come out, and then turn into your side in the half guard. This is probably this is my highest percentage mounts here. Legs inside, fully straight on one leg, turn onto your side, collect the foot, extend the top leg like a scissors to make that knee light so you can get the knee back inside. But really take that point away of extending the top leg, catching the heel to elevate the knee. Can you demonstrate that mount escape one more time? Because I feel like that is definitely something yes, yes. that we use. Right, so. She's crossing her legs, doing everything right, her hips are tight. I don't want her to come up high, elbows are tight, hands are up by my neck, protecting my neck and keeping her hips low. If she moves her hips up around my neck, it's a very difficult position for me to get out of. So first things first, I've got to get my legs back inside. So if she's grapevining like this, extend and circle the leg out. There's one, keep the heel close to your butt so she can't get it back in. Do the same with the other one. Extend and circle in. If she's crossing her feet, you've got to get one foot standing on the top heel to force it open. Get your feet in the center. From here, turn onto your side fractionally and fully extend this lower leg so it's on the floor. This foot will be next to it. I don't want you extending the leg with the foot under it. It's uh, not what we want. So here, fully extended leg. Step over her foot with the spare one and bring it inside. Now from here, extend the leg and drag your lower knee up. From here, we turn into our opponent and we hit our underhook where we can start opening that back door, popping out and onto the back, dropping huge amount of weight through her shoulder, get weight through her arms and take the back. Yeah, that's the that's part that's my favorite mount to skip. Straighten the leg, step forward, inside. Everyone got that? Sometimes when I'm trying to get that that leg over my bottom leg with my heel, sometimes people are really good at keeping their leg really pinned to the floor. Yeah. On occasion I've tried to go and it's kind of been successful, gone under with my toes to like get that scoop and then hook it over and bring it back. Or am I just, is that like a thing we can do or is? Oh, that's, that's a cool idea. Like, so like you hook under it, raise it yeah. and place it in. Yeah, no, yeah. that's absolutely fine. Um, I push very hard on the knee sometimes to get the, low as, the foot as low as possible. Okay. Normally the lower that knee, the easier it will be to bring that leg Got inside. You. Okay. So you can push quite hard. The issue there is the more you turn, the more you push, the easier this escape gets, but the more you expose your back. Your back. So you yeah. have to be ready to immediately link your back escapes. Okay. okay. So what I mean by that, if I'm turning onto my side, the more I'm working hard to get this leg down, the more my back opens up. So Susie will take. A seat belt, she'll bring her left knee really high up my back and now start sitting down. So we've always got to be ready here to get our feet back onto the floor and then bridge up onto our opponent. Yeah. So a lot of you will know escape in the back is about getting your weight and get onto your opponent and getting them onto the wrong side. So we connect those two escape systems, right? So, Susie takes my back. My job here is to get weight onto her and to get her onto the side of the overhook. So I plant my feet, I bridge, and then fall onto the side of the overhook. Then I can start looking to clear arms and turn back into my opponent. Fall out, please. So, 
we go for this escape, we turn in, we manage to collect the foot. She, she's quick, she sees my back is up off the ground. She shoots the knee up. So immediately, I defend my neck, I plant my feet on the floor, right up, up, up. and I bridge. So she's unable to get me to the side of the underhook. Then I can start turning in to get out of the back of it. Back of it. Now, can you move away a bit? Key point <coughs> in defending that back there, when we're turning in. Right. We successfully get down, and our hips are up. We clear this arm over our head. If, please don't do that. Sorry. So, my hips are up. If I drop my hips to the floor, she'll pop straight back to mount again. So when you're escaping the back, your hips have to stay up the whole time. But I've got to turn into my opponent. So with that drill, where I put my near side knee onto the floor, and I turn in. So I'm always keeping weight on my shoulder and my head as I'm turning in. I can't stress enough keeping your hips uh, up off the floor as you're turning into the back there. What, I'll see, what I see a lot, so. yeah, people do all the hard work and then the hips drop down to the floor here and their opponent beats them up into the top position. They might be trying to get on top via the elbow. The hips are low, your opponent's going to bounce up. So be ready and use in this escape to get to react early to start escaping the back. She should be waiting there if your back is exposed to bridge immediately. Everyone cool with that? Right, so that's pushing us to nine o'clock. Is there any questions, any topics that you would like me to start on for the next class? I can work some ideas. Yes, 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 yes. If um, it's a mon, if it's a, it's a Google part. No, it's not, but it's kind of like <laughs> similarly on brand for me. Can we do rubber guard? Yes, I'm not very good at it, um, but I'll, have, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do some rubber guard for you. That's right. I'd, I'm just giving Susie this opportunity to be able to get you. <laughs> Yeah, she's good at it. Susie can teach that class. <laughs> Any other requests, guys? More leg locks, Ross. More leg locks. Okay, I'll, I'll figure out. I'll do some more leg locks. You try, try, you try to incorporate leg locks and rubber guard. That'll be a wild, wild class. But also just like any kind of novelty tricks that you have. Novelty tricks. Yeah. All right. Jiu-jitsu related. Oh, I'll have a thing. Let's see what comes. Jiu obviously, like jiu-jitsu related novelty tricks, but you know, like just any. Jiu-jitsu. Any... So, 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 if I if I come back, so it's like card tricks or something. Next week. <laughs> no, just like yeah, like any kind of novelty trick, I really like. Right. I'll have a think. Maybe like a Python choke or a gas mask or something like that. You're gonna have a whale of a time next time. Yeah, I'm gonna have a great <laughs> Yeah. All right, so Susie's favorite oh, yeah, favorite scorpion novel. Scorpion. Is this. Scorpion. Scorpion. Oh, there right. I die. So I may be I may get injured because Susie doesn't know how to apply this slowly. This key is my favorite submission. Key with the scorpion crunch is the height of your opponent's head. So what Susie wants is to get my head above hers. So here like this. So she's pulled her knees in. She now links up an S grip behind her legs. Now slowly she extends her legs. Go. And now she's going to break my ribs. Do you want to see that again? <laughs> so, and I, so she wants to get her legs across my floating ribs. So my head's above hers and she extends. Go on. And the guy so in the club who's probably best at this is Eula. Who's had somebody Eula do it? It's, it's horrific when he does it. He's like 60 kilos, but ridiculously strong. So yeah, S grip, she extends and breaks the ribs. <laughs> Everyone happy? 
So what is the official position on this submission in the club? Because once I was doing... Uh, it, right, okay, it, so... I came running and was like, stop doing that, Megan. No, right, so... It's, it's, right. It's, I believe body compressions are allowed blue belt and up in IBJF rules. So if you body triangle somebody as a white belt, um, and make them tap with a body triangle, you'll get disqualified. So, yeah, so I think, so body compressions are allowed at blue belt, but I haven't competed IBJF for a long time, so not too sure about that one. But, you know, ask your opponent, I think it's fine as long as you apply it, you know, sensibly same as any submission you know I'm, I'm i'm the guy that likes heel hooks and stuff so rib compressions are all right <laughs> the one, the one to ask. yeah so <laughs> everything's fair game yeah right guys been cool. great seeing you all thank you sir yeah, good. thanks for us good evening see you guys bye bye thanks susie Bye.